At the end, he asked Mr. Pence to pause the voting for 10 days, allow the state legislatures to weigh in, and then they could make a determination to audit or re-audit or recertify. But what he didn't do is, you know, send in the tanks. And that's where we are. Donald Trump's lawyer admits to what, at least according to Jack Smith, is evidence of the conspiracy, and then pretty darkly argues that the outgoing president's decision not to try to illegally order tanks into the, into the street to advance the coup is some kind of saving grace. Well, number one, that won't help the defendant in court. And number two, worse, there's also evidence that Trump did try a plot to use the military to get the Pentagon to seize voting machines. So not tanks, but the same illegal and covert act. That's a lot. I want to bring in former federal prosecutor John Flannery as we get into a Friday night at the end of quite a week in America. Uh, welcome back, sir. Awesome. Good to be here. Quite a week is right. Yeah, I, I, I'm telling viewers this is our special and we have so much coming up, but we wanted to, of course, start with the, the, the latest developments coming out of the arraignment, which we covered last night. Um, I'm curious your response to this, this lawyer's, uh, I don't even want to call it a defense, I'll just call it this lawyer's words, uh, and wonder mm -hmm. whether you see it as the out-of-court thing of trying to launder everything. If you, just, if you just talk about this stuff enough, maybe they think it loses its shock value, or do you see any shall we say, legal or in-court uh, strategy here? Well, sending the tanks is something that should send anybody to a point of just silently thinking such a thing and not saying it. Sending the tanks is third world kind of stuff. You know, if I can't have my way, I'm going to have tanks, you know. I'm going to use the insurgent act to suppress the people if I decide to stay in the White House, that kind of thinking. So I don't see that working in or out of the courthouse. The, the second thing is to, as he said in some places, that is Mr. Laurel, that this was plan D, like plan dumb, that he would say that, well, he had to do something else. Well, so he does concede exactly what is charged against his client as happening. And then on top of it, he ignores the fact that the president was given two, the former president was given two choices. One was, uh, let's accept these alternate uh, electors immediately, or let's send it off for 10 days. And then the next day they talk about it again. And Trump says he wants the first alternative to follow. So alternative D was never really serious. And alternative D is a confirmation that Trump was told, considered, and wanted to do one or the other, but did not want to do nothing. And all of those choices were based on fraud. That is to say, there was no fraud in the election, which is the predicate for it. The electors were fraudulent. And then the legal theory was admitted to Trump and Trump's counsel that Eastman said, I don't think any judge would ever accept this. I mean, yeah. how do you get around that? So I think, right. uh, and that, well, I think Laura, Laura's put his own position in a, a dangerous place to be continued as counsel. Right. You're talking about the, the current Trump defense lawyer. And let's be clear, uh -huh. you have a process under the Constitution where you certify the, the, the results at that point in, in the real world, in the actual reality that we live in, it was President-elect Biden preparing to come into office about two weeks out. And when they say we wanted to stop that, right, if you wake up on the mm -hmm. 7th or the 8th or the 9th and the, and the Congress has not done that final checkmark certification, you've stopped the certification. So they seem to be using delay, 10-day pause, we need more time to investigate. These seem to be real kind of cover words that are bureaucratized as a way to cover what they were actually doing, which is saying, well, we'll stop it. So the president-elect will be missing that one last, generally technicality, but that one last thing that's required in the process. And now we're seeing, again, with the benefit of the investigation and the hindsight, you have a lot of people who do tell on themselves, who were talking openly, even before the six. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. um, who's known Eastman from, from back to their clerking days, um, was one of the most vocal in that related plan. Take a look. What does it say to the nearly half the country that believes this election was rigged if we vote not even to consider the claims? Conduct a 10-day emergency audit. Consider the evidence. John? 
Well, we're talking about, quote, claims that are gossamer thin, non-existent, fluff. They don't exist. And what he's basically saying is, uh, if we really had fraud, maybe we should do something here, but we don't. But I'm going to say it anyhow. So I'm really part of the facilitation of this attack on our very foundation notion of government, which is democratic based on real facts, based on the Constitution and so forth. And it's not very complicated in the Constitution. You count the electors and whoever wins, wins, and that's the end of the day. And at least the vice president understood that. But that was inconvenient to those who wanted to take over the government, starting with Trump and running down a whole bunch of uh, mini-me's who uh, would do anything he said. And uh, it's, it's such a tragedy. And it's amazing that we survived it, which I guess does say something about uh, the goodness of people who moved out of the, their positions to m succeed and to force this to go on. And, you know, I have to give uh, credit to the vice president for not leaving the Hill, for staying there, knowing that he was under risk. And there was a scent of violence in this whole period because you have people saying, well, you know, I'm going to, I, Trump, I'm going to talk about you tomorrow and I'm going to be critical. And then his staff is concerned. Well, that means violence. And yep. he got concerned and alerted the head of the security detail about it. So we, we had the scent of violence for a long time. We had uh, an increasing pressure that pushed us to that point. And it was predictable, it was stated, and it happened. No surprise. Yeah, it happened. Uh, John Flannery, uh, I've mentioned this before. You have been with us from, from the start. Uh, we've tried to cover this journalistically, legally, fairly, um, but with, the, with mm -hmm. the gravity it requires, and this was one of those weeks. So I appreciate your service uh, to the work we try to do here, and thank you, sir.